YouTube, Team Keep It Clean. What's going on? It's Ain't Raven here with another video. And in this video, we got another episode of NFL Questions from Subs. Series where you can ask me any question you want to. We answer in a video like this. If you want to be part of it, patrons, Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can send your question directly on Patreon. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash vids. For everybody else who's not a patron, which is fine, you can send your question to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. We'll answer your question in a video just like this. We have got some great questions like always. It's time. First question to start us off came from Dorian. She said, yo, Engraven, been following and watching for a minute, but this is my first email for questions from subscribers. Appreciate it, Dorian. He says, Snoop has been balling every time he touches the field. That plus the supposedly poor upcoming QB draft class could lead Eric DeCosta's hands to being sore from rubbing in the <laughs> For rubbing them together so much. Shout out to Birdman. Teams like the Panthers, ooh, or the Dolphins. That would be nuts for him. Ooh, man. If if he went to the Dolphins, I would be so happy. For, I would be so happy for him. I would be so happy for him. I'd be happy for the Dolphins. Oh, oh poor Tua, though. But if he went to the Dolphins, oh, man, I, I, I would go crazy for him, man. And the, oh, that because cause he would be playing at the crib. But he would be starting quarter. Oh, man. Anyway. Um, teams like the Panthers or Dolphins have to be terrified on becoming the past Browns as teams continuously searching for their decade-long starting quarterback. Thanks for reading this and have a great day. Go Ravens. Mm. So, yeah, the, the, the Dolphins, like we just talked about, but the Panthers, uh, they got they brought Cam Newton back for this year. Uh, early on, it looked like, okay, let's go. I'm back. But ever since then, it's like, ooh, go back. But... Nah, shout out to Cam. I, I like Cam Newton, but it just, it obviously hasn't been working. It hasn't been, they haven't been winning. Um, but they got him and P.J. Walker. I just read something today that said their coach, Matt Rule, I think. No, not Matt Rule. Yeah, Matt Rule, because Joe Judge is the, I always get them confused. Joe Judge is Giants and Matt Rule is Panthers. But anyway, Panthers coach said that um, both P.J. Walker and Cam Newton would be playing quarterback. I'm like, no, why would you don't do that? That's what Bears were doing with Justin Fields and Andy Dalton, they were letting them, and it just, mm, I just, uh, I'm, I'm not a uh, big fan of that. Uh, and I know Ravens did, they did it with Joe Flacco and Lamar Jackson. Uh, they had Joe Flacco having these drives, and they'd be like, all right, Lamar, hey, come through, man. And have Lamar do those plays. And I was, I was so scared back then, I remember thinking, oh, man, uh, I hope they don't turn this dude into just this. I hope they don't turn into in, into this, into just a weapon. And not a quarterback. It, it was very frightening back then, but everything ended up working itself out. Uh, but yeah, it Tyler Huntley could uh, EDC could have options. He could, especially if, if Tyler Huntley goes out there and just balls out. Ooh boy, EDC could have options. And Tyler Huntley could be starting somewhere for 2022, and it would be one of those bittersweet things because it'll be like, man. Tyler Huntley's gone. Lamar Jackson's backup is gone. It would be a sad story, man. But at the same time, we would all be very, very happy for him and, and hope that he went out there and just killed it wherever he went. Next question came from my guy Dylan. He said, I ain't and team keep it clean. Hope all is well. Just want to throw my two cents into everything. Without Lamar, we aren't close to an eight-win team, especially with the injuries we suffered throughout this season. Bingo. Uh, now I can understand as to why people are frustrated with our team performance, but also directly at Lamar. Like I said, I can understand, but I don't agree. We have been so fortunate with Lamar falling to us in the draft that that defeat... Hurt that defeats hurt everybody so much more uh, because our team with Lamar leading the charge have won so many games. OK, I see what you're saying. So you're saying when, when, when Ravens lose, it hurts a lot more because Ravens don't lose very often. That's true. Uh, we have been spoiled with the opportunity that this team has had the chance to build on that we get carried away. I agree. The Ravens fans, we have definitely been very, very spoiled with Lamar Jackson, spoiled, spoiled, because they don't lose very often, they they really don't, they don't lose very often, so when they lose, it's like, whoa, oh, okay, but anyway, 
Also, I've done some stat tracking going back with Rashad Bateman. I don't think it's Lamar is not looking for him. I honestly think Bateman at the moment isn't getting reps with the first team and training that much. Sammy Watkins played in the Colts game and got hurt and ended up missing a month. Bateman came back uh, the week after and was slowly integrated into the team with some decent performances. Whether he was getting a handful of receptions per game or getting 80 yards per game, Sammy Watkins was eased back into the Miami game and had 7 yards while Bateman had 80. Since then, Bateman has had 3 receptions for 29 yards against the Bears. No, not oh against the Bears. Four receptions for thirty-one against the Browns. Uh, zero against the Steelers. Finally, Bateman was able to show what he is capable of against the Browns, uh, and just got his first one hundred yard game. I think Bateman's progression is hindered by coaching opportunities rather than QB play. But the lack of reps, if that's the case, can explain a lack of connection between Lamar and Bateman. What do you think? Wow, that is a great question. Well, one one thing that I, I'll let you know right here from Jump. Um, Bateman that that needs to be the starter. It he he needs to be the starter. That's it. He don't need to come off the field. Nope. Well, I mean Hollywood come off the field sometimes. I mean they be switching guys out, but he needs to be the starter. Whether Lamar's out there, whether Tyler Huntley's out there, it needs to be Rashad Bateman. Sammy Watkins is still still of course gonna play, but it needs it's it's Bateman time. No more, oh, uh, we'll ease him in. Oh, he'll be behind Sam. No, no more. He needs to be out there. Um, so with that being said, yeah, it it could be a couple of things. Because we saw with Tyler Huntley, his connection with Rashad Bateman was just great. He, and he continued to look for him. He continued to keep him involved in the game. I, I think a big part of that is because they were both second stringers. They're both second stringers because we know the, f the first first string wide receivers for Ravens are Sammy Watkins and Hollywood. Lamar got a connection with those guys, but with uh, Rashad Bateman, he not that he didn't have a connection because remember remember that first game, Rashad Bateman's first game. Lamar, it, it looked like Rashad Bateman had been playing the whole season because they got a connection. So they definitely got a connection. Um, but I think with Tyler, he just... He trusts Rashad Bateman more and is willing to uh, give him more opportunities. With Lamar, I, I feel like it might be because uh, Lamar hasn't had that clutch moment with Rashad Bateman yet. I don't believe so. I'm trying to think. No, he hasn't had that yet. Um, he's had it with Sammy Watkins, obviously the the, the fourth and, and 19 play, which was crazy. Um well, in Hollywood, he's had plenty of clutch moments, obviously with Mark Andrews. But Lamar has had his, his clutch guys that was like, I, I, I know these guys going to make something happen for me. And not saying that he not necessarily doesn't feel that way about Rashad Bateman. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't even know what it is, man. I don't even know what it is. Um, could just be one of those coincidental things to where he ain't been able to, he ain't been hitting Rashad Bateman on the field. So, uh. And so there's there's some games where Lamar he'll there be some receivers where they go off and there be some games where they won't. Uh, probably the biggest consistent guy is probably Mark Andrews though. You know that's Lamar that's his go-to guy. Um, so it's just it, it's just all about reps, man. Reps. It's all about uh, consistency. It's all about uh, repeating the process, doing stuff over and over again, um, and him just really again doing a better job of, of involving different people and just really trying to build that big trust in the 50-50 ball too because he'll throw a 50-50 to Hollywood he'll throw it to Mark Andrews but that 50-50 ball it got to go to some other guys too and that's how you build your big trust next question came from my guy Kyle he said what's up Engraven the Ravens versus Browns game was only a few hours ago and I just have a few questions about this team it seems like Greg Roman is obsessed with running plays and when we do pass all of our receivers are doing intermediate or deep routes with little to no short routes there were multiple times in this game where it was second or third and long and we are running a Q QB draw plays that that's very frustrating um I those uh, and I forget about those a lot I don't know how but those are very frustrating there was a second and 27 in this game second and 27 a second and 25 and they called a draw play and then it was so crazy because on the third down play the draw play might have got like a yard or two I forgot but excuse me on the third down play they called Excuse me, this quick pass to Mark Andrews that got him a nice chunk of yards. And I'm thinking like, oh, hold up, why didn't you use that on second down? That could have been the second down play to make your third and a lot more manageable than 
third and 20, whatever it was. So I just, it's, I don't know, it's crazy sometimes. He said, even if we do pass on those plays, Lamar Huntley in this situation is running every play, which makes it harder to complete a pass to a receiver. We keep putting ourselves in situations where we can't get out because of sacks or penalties. Greg needs to do a better job of drawing plays, which gets the ball out of Lamar's hands. Lamar does have to get some of the blame, too, as we have seen Huntley get the ball out faster than Lamar. Another thought, and that's true, you're right. Uh, another thought that I have is that Huntley was passing to Bateman way more than Lamar was. I'm guessing that it was because they were both second strings and had more practice together, but that's just a theory. <laughs> Do you think that if Lamar returns, will Bateman get the same amount of targets uh, as when Huntley is a quarterback or go back to passing to only Hollywood and Andrews? I, I think he won't have a choice but to uh, involve other guys. And the reason I say that is because I think that Bateman will be on the field a whole lot more than he has been when Lamar has been a quarterback. My last question is, do you think that EDC will do a complete overhaul of this team this offseason? There are multiple spots where this team desperately needs help and the coaches aren't helping either. Lamar can't do everything himself and needs an actual offense to help him out. I can't help but see the Ravens only winning at most two more games and then uh, and even if they do get to the playoffs, it will be one and done. This was supposed to be one our year where we make it to the Super Bowl. We had a stacked roster, which was one of the best in the league for sure. But injuries hit us uh, before the season even started. Uh, with a lot of our defense and key pieces going next season, I envision EDC doing a complete revamp of this team. <coughs> Sorry for this long question. I hope you and your family have a blessed day. <laughs> Appreciate it. A complete overhaul? No. Getting a bunch of guys back healthy? Yes. Uh, but some big changes along the way as well? Yes. Because you got a lot of guys' contracts expiring. Uh, you got Calais Campbell, Brandon Williams. Derek Wolf. I think they'll end up cutting him. Nick Boyle, I forgot where his contract stands right now. Patrick Ricard, his contract is expiring. Uh, Devontae Freeman, Latavius Murray, uh, their contracts are expiring. They're on one-year deals. Um, Sammy Watkins, his contract is expiring. Another one-year oh, his Yeah, he's a one-year deal. One-year, $6 million deal with $5 million guaranteed. Uh, Anthony Averitt, his contract is expiring. Chris Westry, I forgot what kind of deal he's on. But he, he got one of those weird, like, under-the-radar kind of deals. Um, so you got a lot of change that's coming up, but I think you still keep this nucleus of the team together. Patrick Queen, he, I wouldn't anticipate him going anywhere. Marlon Humphrey obviously ain't going anywhere. Mark Andrews, obviously Lamar. Um, J.K. Dobbins, Gus, like a, a bunch of guys are going to be coming back and they'll be healthy. And hopefully they stay healthy for the whole season. So I don't think it'll be this just re, this, this complete overhaul of the team. But it will be significant changes um, and significant comebacks, too. Next question came from my guy Isaiah. He said, should the Ravens try to get Quentin Dunball another corner from free agency? Well, I mean, they might not have no choice but to. I mean, well, who, if, if somebody could just play and they could cover, uh, sometimes for a good 10 to 12 seconds. That's a very long time because sometimes the pass rush just don't get there. Uh, but it's Ravens got slim pickings right now. It's week 15. Like, not many people they sign right now are going to come in and make this huge difference uh, in the secondary. So it's, this is where scheme is going to be everything. I know Wink, with, with all the guys that are hurt, is it, it changes things big time. But this is where scheme, they, they're going to have to rely on scheme more than ever. Of course, you got to rely on player skill as well. Uh, they got to execute too. Uh, but it's going to be so important to, to just make sure whatever guys you do have, uh, they all put in a good position. Next question came from my boy IHOP. He said, Engraving, I got a question that has been burning. I know that by now, basically, the whole Ravens flock has seen those atrocious videos of terrible route running by our wide receivers and tight ends and even our fullback. I want to know why seemingly nothing has changed since last year. Why are these problems still happening? We brought in T. Martin and Keith Williams to coach our guys better, but where's the production? Is this one on one of them or on Giro or on somebody else entirely? Much love to you and yours. Appreciate you. Um, it hasn't been all bad for the wide receivers. I mean, we've seen when Bateman has gotten involved. We've seen what he's, he can do. Uh, we've seen when Hollywood is involved. We've seen what he can do. I mean, he's still got to get his 1,000 yards. This is going to be the season. And his, his yards per season have improved every single year. And even if you took out the 17th game for this year, uh, he will still have more yards than he had uh, just over the past couple years. So there have been improvements. Um, there have also been some little setbacks and whatnot, uh, to where 
sometimes they, with Ravens offense, it could be all or nothing. And a lot of times it can end up being nothing. Um, so they – it's, it's just been, again, the, the where they just, it's always the big play. The big play, big play, big play, big play. Um, and not just, not grinding it out. Or at least recently. Early on the season, they did a lot more grinding it out. But then the, then the slow starts. The slow starts have been just so detrimental to this team. They are so detrimental. And uh, they just got to pick it up. Straight up. They got to pick it up. It is late in the season. And it's like, oh, what more can you do? But... You still got a chance to make some changes and make some adjustments and, and really try to get this thing back on track. Now you got to do it differently since it's going to be Tyler Huntley instead of Lamar. Well, it, at least I expect it to be for this Packers game. Um, so we'll see. Uh, but uh, it's just... Mm. He said, we brought in T. Martin and Keith Williams to coach our guys better, but where's the production? Oh, yeah, we talked about that. We've definitely seen production. We've definitely seen a difference in, in Ravens wide receivers. Everything hasn't been smooth sailing, but we've definitely seen improvement for sure. Um, and he said, is, is this one on one of them or on g or on somebody else entirely? Uh, well, I believe it is g that is the one that designs the plays. Um, but the, the players, they still got to make stuff happen too. So... It's really it's it's on everybody. It starts at the top with coaching, uh, but then it falls down uh, to everybody. Cause sometimes they'll have some good plays called, and there could be a drop. There could be a, a wrong route run. Um, but it, it could be a mix of things. But I, I still I feel like like the Ravens just after this season, whatever happens, hopefully they win the Super Bowl. That'd be great. Uh, but I just feel like they just they need a a, a fresh start. In some key areas A new play for Lamar Next question came from my guy Manuel He said what's up Engraven Shout out from Mexico Since Giro isn't listening to T. Martin and Keith Williams On those passing plays I decided to pitch mine to Lamar and Giro To see if they will do this Even if it's one and done I sent you a picture of it So you can put it on the video But if you can't Then let me describe it Lamar is under center Hollywood and Duve are on a slot position Because of their speed Hollywood runs a go route And Duve, is, Duve runs an inside slam Behind the linebackers uh, on the outside is Bateman and either Watkins or Prochet. Uh, each one runs a short breakout near the outline of the field uh, to catch a, to catch quick and then move the chains fast or gain quick yards on the play. Freeman stays as a blocker to buy Lamar some time. Uh, if this feels like a quick play, a quick play action play because it is, but I don't see the Ravens use it to bait teams on the run or to let our wide receivers free. Uh, we might not have the starters, but they're blitzing us like we have Henry on our team. And this is a way to take advantage of it uh, and let loose our offense. Uh, another you must have noticed is the lack of Mark Andrews in it. Lamar is too dependent on Mark Andrews, and I understand he is his guy, but this play is a way to showcase Lamar and Giro that we have playmakers at wide receiver, not only Mandrews. I hope you like this play, and before you say it might not work, this was one of Flacco's favorite plays from the 2014 season that we saw barely, but... It was because the run game was scary that year. Mm. Well, that's an interesting one. <laughs> oh, so I will will I try to make sure I put it on the screen um, so everybody can see the play that you're talking about, and we'll have to send a, uh, a nice team keep it clean email to Jiro. Last question on this episode of question from subs came from my guy Josh. He said, "Do the Ravens wide receivers need to put Jiro on public blast?" For the betterment of the team. Graven, great job keeping it clean, positive, and most importantly, real with Flock Nation. Do the wide receivers need to get more vocal about their dissatisfaction with G-Row's offense? It seems no one is speaking up, but we see it on the field. Hollywood tweeted last year about not using soldiers. Bateman's change of agency is a call for help. Watkins doesn't even look interested anymore. That one about Watkins. Oh, that one, Um, I, I agree. A lot of times he just looked like he's just there. Uh, maybe it's a lack of involvement. That could be it. Because if you're a wide receiver, what do you want to do? You want to catch the ball. That's it. You want to make you want to make plays. So if you're not doing that, then yeah, you can just be like, oh, you know, well, whatever. So, um, but yeah, that's true. Uh, he said, uh, Pro Proche, Duve, and Boykins are nowhere to be found. Well, Boykins still been dealing with an injury to his finger. Um, Duve, Duve been involved. He's been involved. They've been involving him a lot. Uh, but Proche, no, not at all. Uh, Lamar is a magnetic player. Many speak highly and want to play with him, but I think the presence of a Greg Roman cancels it, cancels it out because Giro is a deterrent of playmakers. Oh, yikes. Sorry for the long message. 
Okay, see, I'm glad you put this last part because that's what I was thinking. He said, we don't have drama divas like Claypool or Juju, but someone needs to speak up. At least the Steelers wide receivers uh, are free to ball out. <laughs> well, they, I mean, they in a much different team offense and we know. But um, should somebody put him on public blast, a, a wide receiver. I don't, I don't think so um, because that's not, that's not the best way to handle stuff. Uh, you don't need to air out all your business. I mean, I mean, we could see the numbers and stuff. We could see the production. We could see the play. We we could see the effort. We could see all that stuff. But I don't think that would be the way to go about it. Now that would put more public pressure, public pressure on Giro. But you could hurt yourself in the long run, depending on how you bounce back and, and how your career goes moving forward. If you call out your offensive coordinator, you could be seen around the league as a problem. You could be seen around the league as, oh, man, this guy, like, oh, that's the kind of teammate that he is. Not a good look. Because people remember that. And when people, when teams are making you offers if you're a free agent, even if your own team is making you an offer to keep you, they want to keep you for cheap. So a lot of times, and unfortunately it's business, they'll try to bring up this, oh, remember this? Ah, yeah, remember that? Oh, look at these numbers right here. These weren't so good. Oh, remember when you said that about the coach? Ah, I don't know if we can commit this much money. to. Are, are you really going to be in it, in it to win it? Are you really, like, committed to us or what? So they, they can just look at a lot of that stuff, and they'll hold that stuff. And that stuff is there forever. Once it's, you know anything. Once anything is on the Internet, it's there forever. So... It just, I don't think that that would be a good way to go about it. Um, I think in-house, privately, would be a great way to go about it. Uh, you approach him with respect, of course, but you approach him and see. Yeah, and whether you got to go through the wide receiver coaches, or you, if G-Row would be approachable, I don't know. But if you approach whoever and, and really see. And but when they approached him, they would have to make sure they had evidence. They had plenty of evidence. Don't just come up with, hey, I, I need to be involved more. No, come up with a come up with evidence on how you haven't been involved and come up with a plan on how you can be involved. So I think if they did it like that, but did it in house, that would be straight. But the outhouse stuff, the, the public put it on social media, whatever, call them out. I don't think that that would really be the way to go.